Hi, this is Eric, and today I'm going to be taking you through a couple of uh, additional settings on the 2D piping. Uh, last week I I created a 2D piping video. This one's kind of an improvement over that one. Let's go ahead and look at the piping uh, settings. So I'm going to go to, into Options, and I've got the draw pipe wall thickness turned off, and I've also got draw centers turned off as well. And I've done this just to simplify the drawing. And for pipe length label, I've turned this on, and my configuration is I've asked to locate label, I have that checked. And I'm putting in the size and the length in here. Uh, so I've got those checked on. For my bomb configuration, I have add bomb balloons, and I've also checked on unique item for each pipe. So this is going to keep track of each individual pipe that I put in the drawing. A couple of more things I wanted to show you. Let's just get out of this real quick. If you don't see this MetQ drop down here, it's because you need to type in menu bar and turn this to one. Uh, so in here, if you go down to the piping, the piping's all in here, but I wanted to show you the configuration here. Uh, in my text and font, I have this set to 0.12. Okay. You can also get to the configuration here in the ribbon. And then if I go over to annotate, I have this select the standard, the style here. And I've also gone into my dim style settings here. I've clicked modify and then I've set this text to 0.12 as well. And these things correspond to the dim scale. So the dim scale setting is set to 24 in this example. 24 equals half inch equals one foot. So that my text comes out big enough when I'm plotting it at that scale. So if I was plotting a quarter inch, so I would double that number to 48. Now, I have a video about dim scale if you get a little bit confused on it. You can also do just a simple um, Google search about dim scale for AutoCAD to find out more about what dim scale really is. But it's basically factoring my uh, text on my dimensions and also my text uh, in the drawing. So let me uh, kind of show you how that all works. So we're going to click on MetQ. We're going to go on to ortho piping. I've got um, six inch selected here. I'm going to select four inch. I've got butt welded for my type here, but you can select whatever you want. I've got carbon steel. Again, select the material that you need here. Um, I've got double line activated. And let's go ahead and draw a piece of pipe in here. Put my first point in. Now you'll notice I don't have ortho turned on. I'm going to have to turn it on down here because you want that turned on. Uh, so type in 12 feet and we're going to go over let's say 12 feet as well. At this point it's going to ask you to put the label in so I'm going to put the label in here, rotate it up. Now it's going to ask for the last point of my pipe run. I'm going to press enter and put in the pipe label again. So so now let's go ahead and put a, um, a flange here on the end. Let's go into the ortho piping again. Click on the flange option, view draw. I've got a welding neck actually as my type. But there's several types here you can choose from. And I just have the bolt centers turned on here. Now it's just a matter of selecting which one of these you need. Now in my example I'm just going to be selecting uh, this one. Now see that little gray X? Um, basically that's my last point that I've entered in MetQ. So if you just press enter it's going to go back to that point and then you rotate the uh, the uh, flange in there 
I, I held down my shift key just to kind of lock the ortho in there. And I'm done with this. Now I'm going to put in a pump. So let's go ahead and do that. Pumps are here. Um, got to check this um, this S1 value here. I go over to this table. I select Edit. S1 means size one. So it's also set to four inches. So that that's fine. Um, we can save this now. Exit, and let's go ahead and draw a plan view. And then we're going to select draw. I'm just going to put in any old point above here. I'm going to move that pump down into position. So let's exit this. Rotate it here. Again, using my shift key there. Now I'm going to type the move command and then previous to select everything. Now I want the midpoint so I'm going to come down here and I'm going to select um, my midpoint. My midpoint. I should probably have that turned on anyways. So let me just go ahead and do that now. So let's right click, go to eSnap settings, endpoint and midpoint. Also need this turned on as well, the ortho. So now I got my pump in there. But let me um, draw a couple more pieces of pipe um, just to give you some examples. So I'm going to be crossing a pipe here, uh, and then I'm going to show you how to trim that once you cross it. So let's do that now. Let's draw a elbow going up first. Uh, I'm going to choose, let's just choose this one. And I'm going to put a point here. Okay, then I'm going to cross that with this. I'll go straight across here. Now, I wanted to show you how to trim this whole thing. That's asking me for the, the uh, label, so I'll put that in there. Uh, to trim this, we need to type in pick style. Set this to zero. And then we'll put a window around our crossing starting from the lower right corner going up. It wants the cutting ent entity, so we'll just select enter. And then it wants the entity to be trimmed. So we'll just select those two there. Now don't forget to turn the pick style back on because if you don't, it won't tabulate the uh, bill of materials correctly. So let's turn it back on again. Perhaps now is a good time to maybe draw a valve over here. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and put a flange in and we'll select this one. Again we can press enter rotate it up then put our valve in again enter and rotate it this way and then at this point it wants the roll angle I'm going to type in 90 and then next I'm going to go ahead and just put another flange on the opposite side. And then just continue my piping. Sort of just up here a ways, let's say a couple feet.
Now, if you want, you can just turn off this labeling altogether. I just was showing you this as an example, how you can label things. Now, when we go back and we dimension, I wanted to show you that. Let's select annotate, and we'll do a linear dimension here. And let's go ahead and just dimension uh, from here to the end of this. Let's just temporarily turn the um, this to quadrant. And now you can see that the text size equals the text size here. And that's really what I was trying to accomplish in the beginning when I was setting this drawing up. So I, I just kind of wanted to show you the reason why I need to set those things up first. Now we're ready to create our bill of materials. So let's go back into MetQ. And then bill of materials. And then create bomb. So now what it's really doing is it's asking us to put leaders in. So this is basically pointing to the pipe that it wants to label. So we need to tell it where the beginning uh, arrow is going to be placed. So we'll just select this point and we'll come out just a ways and then we'll press enter. And now for this one, we're going to just select this and we can come out, you know, a little bit at an angle here. I've got my shift key held down, open a label here, enter. For this one, let's just put it here. So I'm just essentially going around and just putting all these in, which might take a little bit of time here. So I'm gonna speed up the video for you. And now that all my bubbles are in, I placed a point in my drawing. So you can see I need to move it. So I'm going to type the M command. And then I'm just going to select all these lines here. And that grabs the whole table by just selecting it like that. And then I can just, I can take the schedule and then move it up this way. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, I can always go back here and kind of rearrange these bubbles, just move them around. But I think you get the idea. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me at info at catavenue.com uh, or I can be reached at 888-271-7121. Thanks and have a great day.